Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen today. I am going to be showing you five new dinner ideas that you could either make in one pot or one pan. So you already know there is very minimal mess. These meals are so simple to throw together and you will love them. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's go start cooking. We're getting kicked off today by making this outstanding skillet lasagna. So to the pan on my stove, I'm adding one pound of sausage. You could use any type of Italian sausage you like. Just break it up and cook it through. Once it is cooked through, just remove any excess grease and then add in your seasonings, about a half a teaspoon of onion powder and garlic powder, and then a dash of salt and pepper. Stir this together and then after you're through with that, add in 24 ounces of marinara sauce. You could really use any brand of marinara sauce you like or have on hand. And then a cup and a half of chicken broth and then one can of diced tomatoes. Give this a really good stir. Now it's time to add in our lasagna noodles. I'm adding in about three quarters of a pound of the box. And as you see here, I broke the noodles up into really small pieces. This is going to help the noodles cook quicker. And then of course they're bite-sized like that. After I stirred the noodles in, I put the lid on top and I let this simmer covered for about 20 minutes. You do wanna make sure you do stir this very frequently. And if the liquid level gets too low while the noodles are cooking, just add in about a half a cup of chicken broth at a time until your noodles are completely cooked. While we have that cooking away, I'm going to start on the cheesy mixture. So into this little bowl, I added a third a cup of cottage cheese, or you could use ricotta cheese, a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then one cup of mozzarella cheese. Give this a really good stir, and that's seriously all you do for the cheesy mixture. So now that our skillet lasagna is through cooking, the noodles are nice and tender. I'm adding in the cheesy mixture. I do have the heat off at this point. After the cheese melts down, it's ready to serve. Here's my big plate of food. This skillet lasagna tastes identical to regular lasagna, but it is not nearly as much work at all to make. It is so simple to throw together. I served it alongside of a side salad with croutons, avocado, and cherry tomatoes. I poured this dressing over the top of the salad. I've been really liking it recently. Now we're making this beef stew and it will just melt in your mouth. It is that good. I have about a pound and a half of beef stew meat right here. I'm going to be adding about two and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour to the meat and just stir the flour in to coat the meat in the flour. Now I'm adding about two tablespoons of olive oil to my Dutch oven. Once the oil is nice and hot, you are going to add the beef stew meat in and sear the meat on both sides. It should only take a few minutes. Alrighty, so here's my little trick that I like to do for beef stew. I add one of these McCormick beef stew packets in and it makes this beef stew unbelievably quick and easy to throw together just a few ingredients and it makes it super good. So after I added in that packet, I added in three cups of water. Now I'm scraping all the bits off of the bottom of my pan. All of those bits have so much flavor in them. I brought this up to a boil, I dropped it down to a simmer and I let this simmer covered for for about 45 minutes. While we have this simmering away, we are going to begin on the vegetables now. So I'm cutting up one onion, two russet potatoes, two stalks of celery, and two carrots. But you could cut up any vegetables you want to make this your own. After our meat was through simmering, I'm going to add in those vegetables right into the pot and give it a really good stir. And then you are going to continue to let this simmer on your stove for about 25 to 35 minutes or until your vegetables are tender. After 
after those vegetables are cooked, this is what it should look like and your house will be smelling so, so good at this point. Here's my bowl of soup. The meat was fall apart tender. The vegetables were perfectly cooked. And like I said previously, this is just melt in your mouth good. Now we're making this great lower carb option. It's a turkey zucchini skillet. So to the pan on my stove, I'm adding one pound of ground turkey. I'm breaking it up with my meat masher right here. If you don't have one of these meat mashers, I actually have it linked in my Amazon store. They are amazing, I love them. And then I'm going to be seasoning our turkey with about half a teaspoon of cumin and a half a teaspoon of salt. Just cook this turkey through. After we cut our two zucchinis into smaller pieces, and now that our turkey is cooked through, I'm adding two tablespoons of tomato paste in. Just stir that tomato paste in until it's pretty well combined. And then add in your one can of black beans. My black beans are drained and rinsed. A can of drained corn, one can of rotel. And then for the rest of your seasonings, you will be adding in just a dash of salt and pepper, a half a teaspoon of cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and chili powder, and then add in the zucchini, stir this super duper well, and then you are going to let this simmer covered for about eight minutes or until your zucchini are tender. Now that we have our zucchini tender and everything is heated through, this is optional, but I am adding in the juice from a half of a lime. I just love the taste of that. Anyways, after I gave that a stir, it was ready to serve. I served mine with fresh avocado on top, shredded cheese, and more lime, but you could serve this with sour cream, cherry tomatoes, lettuce, anything you want, it would be delicious. Now we're making this pasta bolognese, and if you've never made anything like this before, you really need to. After I added my two tablespoons of olive oil to my Dutch oven and the oil was hot, I added in two stalks of celery that I sliced, one large carrot that I diced, and then also an onion that I diced. I let these vegetables saute for about seven to eight minutes or until they were soft. Now that they are soft, I'm adding in about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Stir the tomato paste in, and then you are going to be adding in one pound of ground beef. You do wanna make sure you do use lean ground beef just to ensure that there's not very much grease in your pan in the end. And then just cook your ground beef through at this point. It's time now to add in 28 ounces of diced tomatoes, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning to give it extra flavor, and then a dash of salt and pepper. You'll also add in three cups of water along with a half a pound of fettuccine noodles. You are going to bring this up to a boil and then drop it down to a simmer and let this simmer uncovered on your stove for about 15 minutes. You do want to stir it frequently though or until your noodles are cooked. Once your noodles are nice and tender, this is what it should be looking like. So I turned the heat off and I added in our half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I let the cheese melt down and then it was ready to serve. Here's my big bowl of food. I just sprinkled mine with a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top and some fresh parsley mainly for the looks, but this is definitely a family favorite in our home. I can make this every week and not get tired of it. It's that good. Now we're getting started on these teriyaki chicken bowls. So to the pan, I have about two tablespoons of hot olive oil in there, and then I'm adding one pound of cubed chicken breast. Next, I'm adding three tablespoons of this teriyaki sauce, and then cook your chicken through. After the chicken is cooked, you are going to add in two cups of uncooked jasmine or long grain white rice, along with three and a half cups of water, a fourth a cup of teriyaki sauce, three tablespoons of soy sauce, one cup of frozen peas, and then three large carrots that I diced. Stir this all together, and then you are going to bring it up to a boil, drop it down to a simmer, and then let this simmer covered for about 15 minutes. You do, of course, want to stir it frequently just to ensure that nothing sticks to the bottom of your pan. 
After that time of simmering, I'm going to be adding in about two cups of fresh broccoli that I cut into smaller pieces. And then you are going to continue to let this simmer for an additional eight to 10 minutes or until the broccoli is tender and the rice is cooked. Here's my teriyaki bowl. I topped mine with plenty of crushed red pepper flakes and sliced green onions. This really is a meal that you can make on a busy weeknight in very minimal time and your entire family will love it. I hope you found a dinner for yourself today and as always, I would really love to have you here so go ahead and subscribe down below the video. I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.